All of you fathers out there know what it's like when you try to get your teenagers to do a little bit of yard work. They can't trim the hedge for more than five minutes without taking a break. I'll tell you what, I've come up with a way to keep your teenagers in gear without having to keep an eye on them. We've all seen these motion detectors. Well, I've wired this one up backwards. It's a lack of motion detector. <laughs> See, as long as there's motion, the light goes off. As soon as there's no motion, the light comes on. Now, a light going on or off is going to have no effect at all on your teenager. If they don't respond to a sunrise, a 60-watt bulb isn't going to impress them. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug this lamp and plug in a pre-recorded tape that plays on this cassette player. And then all you do is aim the motion detector at your teenager, and as long as he's moving, everything's fine. But the minute he stops... Hey, what are you doing sitting around? Get back to work. You know that effort. Get up on your Much. Uh, appreciate it. Bit, bit of a setback, actually, uh, this week. This is the annual Possum Lake Fishing Derby, and so far, nobody's caught any fish. And I'll tell you, if that, if that keeps up, uh, we're not going to be able to give away the great prizes. I think a second prize is a bus ticket to Port Asbestos. <laughs> and if you win first prize, they make it round trip. <laughs> but uh, so far, like I say, there's been no winners, and uh, so I think they should change the rules. I think you should give the prize to the guy with the biggest lure. Great, great, look, hey, look, look. Wow. Look what I caught. Wow, huh? that's huh? a beauty, hey? Is that yeah. a, was that a blowfish? <laughs> 17 pounds. Wow. Yeah, I think the fish and derby should be for the heaviest thing you can catch. It doesn't, doesn't have to be fish. No. Could be a snowmobile or a stove. Yeah. Yeah. I got a better idea, Mr. Green. What's that? Uh, it, it should be a living thing to win. Uh, like, if it can't be a fish, it should be a, a, something else that's alive. Like a swimmer? <laughs> no, like a plant or a tree. <clears throat> oh, man. <laughs> I snagged this beauty in Mercury Creek down by the bridge. Yeah, that's when half the Santa Claus parade went off the bridge and fell into the lake. Yeah. <laughs> they call those things floats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a sec. That, that's not living. That's artificial, Mike. That won't yeah. work. Um, yeah. Sorry. Well, we got to come up with a better way to catch fish. We could drag a big net from one end of the lake to the other, right? Where are we going to get a net that size? The tennis club. <laughs> They don't lock that gate. Oh, no, but you know, the trouble is there, there isn't any fish. I think maybe we should just test the water in the lake. You know what we could do, eh? We could drain the whole thing, huh? Eh? Hook all our cars up there, drop the rad hoses in by the boat ramp, start up the engines, make that puppy as dry as a martini, huh? I, I think that we should test the water in the lake. What? You know, I've heard that if you fire off a big charge of dynamite mm. underwater, you can fish with a pitchfork. <laughs> Test the water in the lake. <laughs> Cleaning out your eaves troughs is something you should do on an annual basis. No matter how many trees I blow up, I still get leaves in them. <laughs> and dirt, sticks, little chunks of my propane tank. <laughs> here's an easy way to clean them out. You borrow a hunk of hose from a local building. Uh, you might want to hose down the building for safety. Then you attach the nozzle to the bottom part of the downspout on your eave trough with the explosive enthusiast's secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> no, I think it was Sir Isaac Newton John who said, whatever goes down must go up if you got enough water pressure. <laughs> Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll have those PL statements ready for the audit for you for by about, oh, 3 o'clock. Noon? Three. Noon? Yeah. Oh, noon's easy. I can do noon, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gum? Mm hmm. It's great. It's like bubblicious, but it's not. You know what it is? You know what it is? You know what it is? It's gone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's gone. It's gone. Already. Yeah, I can do that for you. Yep. Noon's not a problem, sir. Already. Okay. You, you got. 
You have a good day, too. Harold? Oh! <laughs> Pressure getting to you, Harold? No, no, oh, no. No, no I love this job. It's, right, a, yeah. it's just the greatest. Look at this, Uncle Red. I'm an assistant account executive. Oh, yeah, I see that, eh? Account executive, eh? How many accounts do you have, Harold? None. So you're a no account executive, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, don't you worry, I'm getting there. Everybody says I have what it takes to be a financial advisor. Is that a compliment, do you think? <laughs> Uncle Red, I know you mean well, but I'm not coming back to the lodge. Oh, I'm not coming back to the lodge. I, know. I got this job, I like it, and I'm good at it. Yeah, well, I, I just don't want you to get hurt, that's all. You insult me so I won't get hurt? You know, Harold, Harold, this is the big city. People will take advantage of you, Harold, all right? I want you to be treated fairly. Uncle That's, Red, yeah. I make $1,200 a week. What, what do you mean when you say a week? Um, a week. $1,200 a week. And they pay me every week. <laughs> yeah. uh, Harold, Harold, this, this is a big adjustment uh, for me. Uh -huh. I think I'm going to have to go home now, Harold. Oh. Well, I understand. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in to check up on me. And you drop by any time you like. Yeah. Okay, Harold. Thanks. Well, Harold, I can't move my foot. Oh, no. Is it a stroke? No, it looks like gum. Parking <laughs> lots can be frustrating, can't they? You either can't find a spot at all, or then you do get one, and by the time you get back to your car, somebody has boxed you in, eh? Maybe the guy whose spot you took, or maybe the parking lot owner getting back at you for not paying last time. Well, today, I'm gonna show you a fast, cheap, unembarrassing way to get into or out of a tight parking spot. First thing you need, your spare. Now, your spare might be flat. It doesn't matter, it'll work just as good. And then you need a, a jack, but I don't, you don't want this kind of jack. You want, the, you want the hydraulic type. They have a little more lifting power. Because we're not just going to be lifting one end of the vehicle. But hey, I'm getting way ahead of myself. All right, I got two jacks. That means I can open. <laughs> Next thing you want to do is horse the back seat out of there. All right, hit it. Now, you may notice with that particular method of removing the seat, uh, there is a certain amount of uh, damage to the floor area, but that gaping hole in there is going to come in real handy later. But I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Okay, first thing we got to do now is mount the jack to the inside of the roof. And for that, I'm going to use the heavy-duty self-tapping machine screws rather than duct tape. Although you could put duct tape on the screws later, you know, for appearances. <laughs> All right, now I want to hang the spare tire under the jack. But uh, right at right at floor level there, <laughs> and uh, then I'll be all. Guess those machine screws were a little bit long. Okay, I need something to fill the gap between the jack and where the spare tire is going to be. I could use, I guess, a four by four on that, but I want something a lot stronger that won't twist and warp. So I'm going to use this old car drive shaft here. I've already measured the length. Now I'll just cut it to size. <laughs> I decided to go with the 4x4 four four after all on that. <laughs> but uh, she, she's all assembled. Uh, we got the jack hanging from the roof, and we got the spare hanging from the jack, and the whole unit is positioned over our big hole in the floor. So now, whenever we want to get into or out of a real tight parking spot, all we do is jack down the spare, which will jack up the car, and we spin her around till she's facing the right way, and we jack up the spare, which will jack down the car, and we're out of there. <laughs> Funny how life solutions are usually so simple, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, my wife's gonna go nuts when she sees this, but I'm getting, I'm getting way ahead of myself. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna take this baby for a spin. <laughs>
wanna to talk to you middle-aged guys out there. How many times over the last 10 years have you regretted saying the words, watch this? <laughs> How many of your scars, your missing fingers, your faded memory are a direct result of saying the words, watch this? <laughs> you know, maybe it's time to replace the words, watch this, with phrases that are more suited to your current physical condition. <laughs> phrases like, where are my glasses? <laughs> or, where are my other glasses? <laughs> or the ever popular, honey, I swear it must have been the dog. <laughs> you see, women aren't the only ones whose biological clocks are ticking. It's just that our clocks are saying different things. You know, women's clocks are saying, you're having hot flashes. Or, you know, I think screaming will make everything better. <laughs> but our clocks are saying, Get off the roof, you fool. <laughs> or put those roller blades down now. <laughs> the important thing is never say, watch this. All right? <laughs> Just accept the fact that you've reached that point in your life where there's nothing about you that's worth watching. <laughs> Except, of course, for your manners and your cholesterol levels. And remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Well, Dalton took a sample of Possum Lake water in to be tested, but I don't, I just don't think that's a problem, so I'm gonna put a little bit on the plants, maybe let the dogs drink it, and I'll prove there's nothing wrong with it. We read, got the uh, report on Possum Lake, does not look good. Wow, those government sissy boys find something wrong with our water. According to the list, Possum Lake is no longer classified as a body of water. What? No, it's a sus suspension of manganese and sulfate particulate in a 40% solution of methyl alcohol. Are you saying Possum Lake is a Singapore sling? No. <laughs> methyl alcohol is, well, it's like gasoline. It's no wonder there's no fish in the lake. You know, we've got a very highly corrosive and toxic mixture there. Oh, that's crazy. Don't I? Hold, hold this back. Hold on. Let me show you something, buddy. Watch this. The water took the bottom right out of this pail. It'll do the same thing to you. Well, what are we gonna do? Well, a report says we should install a, a water purification system to clean the lake. Yeah, well, what's that gonna cost? Seven million dollars. That sounds high to me. Wait a minute. Water filtration, that's just filters and chemicals. It would just throw some weed killer into the lake and then just filter the whole deal through some old mattresses. You know, it's just crazy enough that it might work. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Real special adventure uh, this time around. We're uh, gonna make kind of a cenotaph unit uh, out there, out behind the lodge. And we had one of those, uh, the power auger, had a couple of bushes, and uh, we had had a flag sent to us by uh, some friends in Moose Jaw, and Winston was getting the flag pull out of the van. It's hard to get a pull that big into, a, into one of the smaller vans, but, uh, but uh, we had cooler. You know, watch out. Careful, not careful. Watch out. Oh, oh, oh. By oh, golly. All right, okay. Well, we got everything. That's the main thing. So now, uh, I was telling the boys we, we got to dig some holes. We gotta dig, first of all, we got to dig a hole for the flagpole. And when you got a 20, 30 foot pole, it's got to go down at least four inches, I believe. So, uh, I got to get the power auger up. Pick that up, boys. Pick her up. Hoist her up there. Come on. Hoist her up. Pick her up. Hit her going. Look out. Okay. All right. All right. Now, the thing with these power augers, they're fine until they hit a rock. And then, uh, you know. So, when they figured, okay, you know, let's go to four horsepower. You know, it's still, still not, not, not. So, then we went back to the manual style, and we had the windshield scraper and a tire iron. Because we needed, we actually needed a hole for the five pole and one for each of the bushes. But, uh, we got the now we're all see, kind of see the cenotaph starting to take place now. We're gonna put first thing we do, we'll put the bushes in the bushes. Go, bring the bushes over, boys. Bring them over. Call them over. Get them over. Come on, bring them over. Now we gotta put the five pole up in the middle thing there. It looks like Iwo Jima, doesn't it? <laughs> there goes Mikey. And uh, there we are. Got her in. Beautiful. Okay, we're all set. Got the pole up there. Great and everything. And now this is a very, very, very important moment in our lives. Getting out this special flag sent to us from our friends in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Look at that, that's the possum crap. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> we take things pretty seriously up here at the line. So all I had to do 
just uh, run her up the flagpole, as they say in the boardrooms, and we're about as bored as you can get at this point. So we got her up there, and said, well, you know what? I hung the darn thing upside down. Of course, I get a lot of cooperation out of my friends here. Oh, man. Oh, look what they do. Oh, come on, guys. That's not good. So I try to get her down. She's jammed up there, and now I gotta now I gotta take the whole pole down. Maybe we can just shake her a bit. Maybe she'll come down. And thanks for all the help. We finally got the pole down. We got her up straight and everything. And uh, I thought we were in real good shape. I think we may have weakened the, the hole a little bit by shaking it because. Um, but you know, in life, sometimes things don't go your way. You gotta adapt. <laughs> huh? Huh? Still not right, still not right. There we go. Oh, red, red, green. <laughs> what a great surprise. Well, it shouldn't really be a surprise, Gord. I told you I was coming. Yeah, I know, but I forced myself to forget. <laughs> you ever done that? I'll try it right after I leave. <laughs> This card. Oh, oh yeah, that's my uh, that's my new watchtower guest book. Oh yeah. From now on, everybody that visits the tower will sign the guest book. Oh yeah, no, I know, I know this. I gave you this book four years ago. Do you remember? I was the first one to sign it. Eh? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one who signed in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you could sign it again. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Sure. I'll sign it again. Sure. No there you go. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, except this time, could you sign it from Shirley or Angela? <laughs> And write something mushy like a poem or something. No, no, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not really comfortable writing to you from a woman, you know, it bothers me. Really? Yeah. Maybe you should see somebody about that. Uh, uh, Gordon, doesn't it seem unusual that you've been here for four years and you haven't had any visitors? <laughs> Is that what you think? Yeah. I've had plenty of visitors up oh, here, Red. Oh. Hundreds every week. Oh. You don't know much about mosquitoes, do you? I'm thinking real visitors, human visitors, Gordon. Well, who do you think Shirley and Angela are? Oh. They're human. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy, are they human. Oh. <laughs> Except they only come when I'm asleep. Yeah. But they come often. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, I'd probably go crazy. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Tell you what, Gordon, all right. I'll, I'll sign one to you from Angela. How's that? Uh, better make it Shirley. Mm -hmm. Angela's left-handed. You know, there's nothing like sports to teach kids what life's all about. And, and what better place to learn about winning and losing and, and good sportsmanship and patience than the old ballpark, huh? <laughs> Today I'm teaching the young one here about patience. You know what I'm talking about. Good things come to those who wait. <laughs> it's an important lesson. Oh, oh, no, 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 you don't want that. No, this is full of nitrates, animal byproducts. Ugh. <laughs> See where? That's where the pitcher's mound is. There's a batter's box. And a major league pitcher winds up. That ball's going 90 miles an hour across that plate. So it makes this game so great. Huh. He loves this. <laughs> <laughs> this is just about perfect, too. So get a kid, grab a hot dog, come to the ballpark, spend some quality time together. Be something that'll reward the both of you. When does the ball game start? Thursday. <laughs> well, uh, we're getting there. You know, uh, the lake still has uh, bits of stuff floating around in it, but. <laughs> I think all the explosive toxins have been removed. <laughs> Thanks to Mike. <laughs> Mike, uh, is there anything you wanted to say to the kids watching out there? Uh, yes, Mr. Green. Uh, smoking cigarettes is hazardous to your health. <laughs> Especially if you're standing in a lake of gasoline. It's actually a good thing that we don't have any fish in there. Possum Lake would be chowder at this point. <laughs> But, but, you know, uh, on the bright side, there was some good news that come out of this, according to the report, anyway. Re read it, read it to him, oh, Dalton. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Blow it out, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out. All right, all right. 
Uh, once the methyl alcohol contaminants have been removed, the remaining impurities are non-toxic oh, yeah. and can be removed by filtration. Yeah, see, so all we got to do now is filter the water and possibly make will be healthy again. So what we had to do is come up with a cost-effective, efficient filtration system, and this is where the brilliance comes in. Well, I don't think it's so brilliant. No, no, but then <laughs> you didn't think of it, did you, Mike? <laughs> all you could think of was, I think I'll light up a cigarette, and now none of us have eyebrows. <laughs> So what we have is the best filter system anybody could ever devise. You know what I'm talking about? The human body. That's right. Just let nature take its course. Huh? A huh? miracle of the human kidney. That's the thing right there. <laughs> we figured out that every Possum Lodge member drinks... 45 gallons. 45 gallons of Possum Lake water. A week. 45 gallons of Possum Lake a week. For 27 weeks. In 27 weeks, and then we'll have the lake crystal clear again. The only problem is nobody can leave town or the water level will be down. I don't think I can drink that much water, Mr. Green. Mike, if you can smoke, you can drink. <laughs> oh, gee, there's the meaning. Come yeah. on, let's tell the others. You guys go ahead. I'll be down in a minute. Uh, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I'd really appreciate it. You use a little extra salt in your cooking because I need to be a little extra thirsty for the next little while. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Sit down, please. Take your seats, everybody. The lodge means about to start. Come on now. Take your seats. Take your seats. All rise! All rise! Bondo Omni Flancus Moritati. Sit down. <laughs> All right, uh, bow your heads. Join me in the men's prayer. I'm a man, I'm a man but I can change if I have to, to, I guess. Yes. Bring it in, Mike. Just water. 45 gallons a week, guys. <laughs>